Good morning, welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Today I'm going to work on an unusual project that is inspired from a single piece of junk. And this is something that my grandson picked up out of the street and said, Grandpa can do something with this, so I'm going to try and do something with it. This is some sort of a little cap, plumbing cap or something. I'm not sure what it came off of. It's old, it's rusty, it's broken, it's got a seized up old screw in the middle of it. And I'm going to use that as the lid for a little container. For the main body of the container, I'm just going to use a piece of tubing. And this just happens to fit this lid just right. With the possible exception of the little gap in the back where this thing was broken off. And I'm going to deal with that and we'll show you what we do with that as we get onto the video. And I'm going to use a little bit of quarter inch flat bar to make the bottom of the box out of or the vessel out of so that it's got a bottom and I'll I'll set this inside of it and then we'll rivet through to hold that in place. So I hope that makes sense. It should be a relatively straightforward project, but it may not be a real quick project. So this may end up being a part one, part two. We might get everything forged and ready, do the assembly in a second video. We'll just see how things go. So let's not dawdle for too long. It's time to start cutting parts out. Unfortunately, this isn't one we just jump right to forging. Things are going to have to be properly prepared, and there's not really going to be a whole lot of forge work to do here. So the first thing that I want to do is just mark out the bottom here. And I'm going to do that from the inside of the tube, and we'll cut this on the bandsaw. That's really all we need. Make sure I cut outside the line so that it fits tight. I'd rather have to grind this down some more than uh, have it too loose and floppy. If it doesn't fit, it's going to be hard to get set in there. The next thing I want to do is, for this, I think it needs a little kick up. So I'm actually going to drop this down. I'm going to leave a little bit in the back big enough for the, the gap. And then I'm going to take the rest of that down oh, about a half an inch, I think. I'm just using my fingers as a little guide to hopefully keep this fairly parallel. It looks pretty good. And we're going to cut that out, and then we'll shape this a little bit or do something to it. And hopefully that will make sense when we get to that part of the forging. This will take a little bit of grinding and filing and such like that in there to get that all cleaned up. But it comes pretty close to being just what I want for that. So just a little bit of work and we'll fit just fine. There's the piece that'll become our bottom. We'll just need to grind that around there and then test it as I go to make sure that it's actually going to fit. Well, here we are cut out for the lid. That'll go on like that. There's still going to need to be a little work here. I want to flatten this out so it actually matches this profile, but I don't want to flatten it all the way down to the bottom because I want to leave a round bottom, which is where our bottom will fit into. And it fits pretty nice. Depends on how you turn it. There's just enough irregularity that you got to work with it, but it'll fit. And we will blind rivet this in, oh, probably in six or eight rivets. And that's mostly for looks. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and flatten this out, take that to the forge. I also want to scale this up quite a bit. So I'm going to run the forge at a fairly high heat 
wire brush it, put it back in, heat it up, wire brush it. And I want to give this some texture, but I don't want to hammer on it. So I'm hoping that the scale texture from the forge will do a nice job. So let's go do some of the minimal forging that's actually going to be done to this. A lot of this is really more of an assembly project. It's sort of a fabrication project, except I'm going to try to avoid any actual arc welding or anything like that. Although if you really wanted to, you could tack weld the bottom in and it would hold just fine. But I think the rivets are a little bit classier approach. They're going to be part of the decorative element of the whole thing. So I like the idea of putting the rivets in. I'm also going to go ahead and heat this up, give it a good wire brushing. Hope that breaks some of the crud in this screw. Because I want to take this screw out and replace it with some sort of a forged handle. And that'll be another piece of forge work we can add to this project. So really the first thing I'm doing is just letting this scale. I don't want to push too hard as I brush because I don't want to knock the tubing out around. And I'm going to do this probably three times and maybe even let it sit in the forge way longer than I normally would just to really bring up a good scale layer there. And as we brush that off, maybe even sand it later, that's all going to leave a a nice texture on the surface. run the bottom through the process as well. I think this would be a good time to put my touch mark on this. The touch mark will be on the very bottom that way. Make sure I get these going the right direction. I hate it when one or the other of them is upside down. If you got your bottom too small and it just falls through the tube, you can actually draw it out a little bit doing this. I'm just making sure it's flat after putting the touch mark in and adding just a little bit of hammer texture and scale texture from the scale on the top of the anvil. That'll be the bottom. And this has been sitting in the forge getting good and scaled up. Starting to see some little pits in there from repeated scaling heats. And while sometimes that's not desirable, on this project is exactly what I'm going for. Now I want to go ahead and do the, the little flat here so it matches the profile of the lid. I'm just going to come up here. And to do that there, I'm I think I actually want to go over to the double horn anvil. That would be a good place for it. This should let me get this kind of flat without messing up the rest of the profile. And I'll kind of taper it down so this stays round on this end, but has the flat on this end. And some of this I can fix cold. It's not going to hurt anything. To... Do a little bit of that cold. One last wire brushing and I think we've got it. Kind of like that. I think this stiffer wire brush does a better job on this large, smooth surface. So 
there is our little container. with a bottom that may or may not still fit. It's a little bit, it's gonna be kind of a tight fit right now, but that's okay. It means I have to work on it. And a lid that fits very nicely. All right, all of our pieces and parts have cooled off now. We've got the bottom that fits in here just barely we might actually have to tap it in that's perfect that way it'll help it stay in place while we drill the holes for the rivets we've got the top taken care of so it's just a little bit decorative there and then that flat matches the the lid here so all of that should go together nicely we'll still need to go back to the forge and make a little knob to go on the top here i'm still thinking in my head what i want that to look like but i'll settle on something here in a minute or two the screw that was in there actually turned out to be a brass screw, which is why it broke off right after we brought it out of the forge. Brass just doesn't hold up to that heat. And that means it was easy to drill out, and then I'll just tap that for a quarter twenty thread, and we'll be ready to put a new knob on there as soon as I make the knob. First thing, though, I want to go ahead and get the bottom set. See if it fits better one way or another. I think I'm going to need to take the little bit of weld bead off right there. So this is just a weld seam on the inside for manufacturing the tube. You could file that out entirely if you wanted to. It would probably look good, but I don't know if it matters that much. And by doing that, I think this is going to fit very nicely now. That wants to stay in place, so that'll be nice. That'll help drill the holes. So that's a good test fit, because before I do that, I want to take my little scriber here, and I want to very gently scribe around this. I don't want that line to show real boldly in the finished piece. And that's an eighth inch in for a quarter inch bottom. So this is, what, six mil, so it's three mil in. And we'll drill eight inch holes in that. And that will give us a nice place for our rivets. I'm just going to start with a single hole and rivet at first. Just to hold everything in place. Center punch mark. I'm going to have about a sixteenth of an inch gap between the rivet head and the piece when this is all done. Just like that. So that rivet doesn't set down tight. So I'm just going to put a little piece of leather over the top of the vise so this kind of holds this and won't gouge it. And I'm just going to do a little hand set rivet there. Just like that. Now that doesn't want to come back out. That rivet has to expand somewhere and when it hits the bottom of the hole that it expands to fill the sides of the hole and it makes a nice tight fit. It's not something if you wanted to grab it and pop it out you could probably get it out but by the time I've put eight rivets around this that bottom isn't going to want to fall out. You'd have to be trying to get it out. So I'm going to go to the exact opposite side make sure that's still flush. Put another little center punch mark in. I'm just going by eye to get what is and isn't opposite. That's just up to how mathematically perfect you want to be. Now this time I've got this in the drill press device so this rivet overhangs the edge and that way I can drill straight to make sure that's flush. 
Once this starts to drill into that bottom piece, you're going to lose any opportunity to fix it if it's wrong. But once there's two rivets in there, the odds of it getting off at this point are very slim. And you could set these with a rivet set, but I don't mind the flatter rivets. I think they look good. A few little hammer facets add to the texture. But again, that rivet has to expand inside that hole. It has to fill up the space created by the drill bit that allows the rivet to fit the hole in the first place. So just go around. And I like, I think I like eight rivets in this. Just whatever you want to do. And like I say, a couple little tack welds on this, it would stay forever. I just think the rivets look nicer. So I'll see you back here when I get the rest of these rivets done. So there is our bottom all riveted into the bottom of our tube. Some of these did work loose as we riveted, so I put a little longer rivet in. Now they all feel pretty good and solid. The bottom is good and solid. Again, if you grab these with pliers, you could probably pull them out. This is not structural. It's just to keep the bottom in a little keepsake box here. And the lid's going to go on like that. And hopefully we can get this lid a little cleaner and wax it and it'll look nice and black like the rest of this does. But we need a knob for the top of that. So I think I'm going to start with a piece of half inch square bar, make kind of a diamond shaped knob for the end of this with a quarter 20 thread on it so it screws in there. And then this project will probably be pretty much done. So I just want to start in the guillotine tool and offset enough for a little quarter inch tenon here. And that'll be round, so I am knocking the corners down with the butcher. And that's more than enough for what I need to do. We'll change the dies to a set of tenoning dies with a quarter inch space. We just Take that down till it's quarter inch square, then we'll go octagon and round. Such a short tenant that keeps bouncing out of the tool, but nothing we can't deal with. It's just a good start. Whoa, didn't want to do that. As this gets down to that quarter inch, we can go octagon, then we can go round. It's left a little blob on the end because it pushed out that far. But I only need about a quarter inch of threaded tin in here in the long run. So we're going to end up cutting that off anyways. cut that off. There's just no reason to mess with the extra length. You can use a monkey tool to see if that's the right size. It's awfully close. We might need to do a little filing to get it just right. But we can do it 
by forging it's more efficient not bad make sure the monkey tool is going on straight to forge a nice square shoulder there I just want to put a little taper in where that shoulder is I'll need to use the monkey tool again but this will be one side of my diamond shaped knob or handle or finial or whatever you want to call it I think in the long run this will probably need some filing to clean it all up but that's just to start next thing I want to do is cut this off I'm going to use the butcher tool to cut it off so it comes to a point a butcher really isn't meant for cutting, but because it does squish everything out in a long taper, if you go too far, it will cut it. And that starts to form the top of my diamond. This is going to get some filing or grinding to clean that up. I don't think I'm going to do any more forge work to it. I think it's as close as I can get by forging. So I've gone ahead and ground that down and then just lightly reforged it to get rid of any of the grinder marks. A little bit of a cheat, but I think it made this look much more symmetrical and it'll look better in the long run. So the next thing I want to do is just go ahead and cut some quarter 20 threads on here. That's pretty much all we need to do on that. Now we need to cut a internal thread on the the lid. A flat spot will really help in this case. There's actually already a quarter 20 thread in there where that brass screw is, or was. I'm just cleaning it up. That just goes through there very nicely. countersink should allow this to go all the way down tight to the top there. Which it does. So there's our little lid. It's a little crooked. I think I'll heat it up and give it a little tap. The other thing I want to do before I do that I'm just going to take a center punch on the inside here and I'm going to center punch out the bottom of this screw in a few places and that will help guarantee that it can't come loose. It just kind of upsets the end of this threaded bit. Now that's not going to come loose, but it is still just a hair crooked, so I'm going to straighten that out a little bit. Decide which way it leans. Just give it a little 
tap on the facet there. I think that's all that's going to need. As it cools from a now as it cools down to a black heat, I'll use the usual paste wax finish. Our little keepsake box should be finished. Well, there's our little vessel container box, whatever you want to call it. It's just a fun little project. Not a lot of active forge work, but some interesting assembly issues to try and get all these rivets in. Some of those did give me some fits that while I was working on one side, things stretched and moved just enough to pop one out on the other side. So some of them got put back in several times. But right now, I can't get any of those to want to come loose, so I think I'm okay on that. And as I say, it is not a structural issue. You could drill, tap, and thread those and put little machine screws in. You could tack weld it from the back. You could braze it from the inside. Lots of ways you could attach this. I just like the look of the little rivets running around the bottom of the box there. So that gets shipped off to my grandson. The lid is the piece that he found, and the knob is, of course, not original. Everything is added to this just to use that one found piece. And sometimes that can be a fun little challenge to yourself to start with one weird thing and see what you can add to it to make it something useful. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Ring that bell if you want notifications of when I make new videos. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends or on social media, but then by all means, try to make time in your day to get out to your shop, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.